Hi there, Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com and on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glen Berbe Folk Duo. This is lesson number 17 in our How to Learn the Bagpipes series and in this lesson we're going to deviate a little from the marches and slow airs we've been learning so far and we're going to learn a jig called Cork Hill. The setting that we will take this tune from is contained in chapter 19 of the National Piping Centre Tutor book. <clears throat> the jig is written in 6-8 time. It's also in Scots Guards book 1. The main difference you will find is that the National Piping Centre introduced the tune in what's referred to as a round fashion, whereas Scots Guards book 1, having been first compiled in the 1950s, still uses a dotted and cut version, or a slightly more traditional version, of the jig. Both versions, other than that, are broadly the same, so you could use the Scots Guards version if you wanted, just using the round method <coughs> of playing the jig that we have here. The embellishments that will be used in this jig are mainly G, D and E triplets. That's why we're introducing this just now. Also, I was requested to do it. Before we go any further, uh, the jig is in four parts and I'm going to play it relatively slowly for you. Now, contrary to popular belief, jigs do not have to go very fast at all. Don't forget, these are designed for dancing. If the jig can be played fast enough for dancing, which, believe it or not, isn't too much faster than the speed we just played it at, then that's quite fast enough. Uh, of course, they can be played very quickly. Regardless of tempo, please make sure that you're still playing this jig correctly. <coughs> We have different challenges throughout the tune. In the second part, we have to beware of crossing noises, for instance. In the last part, false fingering may be the issue. We're moving from the bottom hand to the top hand all the time. We will take this tune in phrases, however, they are likely to be slightly longer phrases than usual. Uh, the tune is four bars. It's a relatively long jig. So, the first line, remember the parts are repeated as well. The first line... What we have in there is a G, D, E to low A, recovering with a G grace note to E, 
a joining note of F before a G grace note to E and a C strike. A G grace note to E, joining note of F and this time back to a G, D, E on low A. Up to a G grace note on E, joining note of F, G grace note on E and a C strike before a doubling. The doubling must be very open and in time with the rest of these embellishments. Play it very open, no note really here is, or no note of identical value is, is longer than any other note. We're going to play that one more time. Big grace notes will help you move from note to note without crossing or having any extra notes there. Please pause the video now and practice the first line of the jig cork hill. Moving on to the second line, as in so many other tunes, our first two bars are the same as the first two bars in line one. We finish off slightly differently, incorporating uh, I'll throw on D as usual. I'll ask you to dig down to the low G in that throw. We're not going to identify every single note in this line. Instead, we'll crack on. Please remember that the doubling on C, the second last note in the line, must be as even. as the G, D and E's before them. If we're going to pause anywhere at all, we can perhaps emphasise that C after the doubling. Let's have a look at the full part, part one of Cork Hill. Remember, you are going to repeat this part. There are double dots there at the end of the line. Pause the video now and practice the first part of Cork Hill, remembering please to repeat the parts. Let's now have a look at part two. In part two, we are going to be coming from low A, a D grace note to C and up to E. So there's a classic place for crossing from the C to the E. And after the E, we're going to be moving up to the high A. Now this is another classic place for clock crossing as well, try and avoid it. Please get the E up before the C goes down and avoid this. That's the C's down first, so you'll either get a low G or a, a low A before hitting the E. The E is a slightly, the E to high A is a slightly more subtle crossing noise. It's more difficult to detect, but it is just as likely to happen. That's nothing to do with the, the slavery high A there, but if the E is down before the high A comes up, you will encounter an extra A. We call these crossing noises, but they are in fact mistakes. Let's have a look at part two. I would ask you to really take your time here, please, between transitioning between all the notes to avoid crossing noises. If you hear them, please don't carry on. Stop and practice that movement until you can do it without any crossing noises. And as usual, the most common remedy, the one which is going to work, is slow it down until you no longer cross. <laughs>
nice open seat are going at the end. I hope you did okay with your lack of crossing noises. Please pause the video now and practice part two of Cork Hill. Welcome to part three. Very often in four-party tunes, I believe this is the first four-party tune we've done, the third part is the most difficult or the most intricate. And this one is full of GDEs and strikes with almost no respite from them until the end of the part. So the best approach, as usual, is to play the tune very, very slowly until you've mastered the finger technique with no mistakes or crossing noises. Use large grace notes. Remember your GDE sequence. The strikes are C strikes and D strikes, the D strikes, are closed. That's right the way down to low G. Again, please remember and dig in to the D throw in line two of this part and keep the doubling on C in both lines nice and open. Please pause the video now. Remember that you have to play this part at least twice when you're practicing it because there is a set of double dots at the end of the, the line. Pause the video now and practice the third part of Cork Hill. Part four is almost a combination of parts three and two with possibly the most intricate bits in these parts flung together. Be careful here that you don't false finger. We're going to be G, D, E to A, up to high A, and then the C strike comes in. Don't return to the next E like that, because you're coming back to the C strike again. We have, at the end of bar one, two, uh, two Cs there, a C and a C strike, up to an E at the start of bar two, and back down for the C strike. But please form a proper E in between all these C's. The other thing to watch, we're moving from C to high A. Potential for crossing noises yet again. Slow this down, play evenly and go for correct fingering before speed or even rhythm. <laughs> Pause the video now and practice part four of the Jig Cork Hill. Now after practicing these four parts separately, you should at least be fairly competent with the last two bars of each part because they're the same. You'll hear the patterns repeating through this tune, just as they have in every other tune so far. The funny thing about jigs is because they're faster tunes, people think that they tend to be very much more intricate. But there are some nice simple jigs which are suitable for beginners such as Cork Hill. So please have fun with this, don't try and play it too fast. And what we'll do before closing off is we'll play the full tune through for you. I'll count you in, see if you can play it along with me. One, two. <laughs>
hope you managed okay. In the next lesson, we will perhaps start looking at another two disciplines of tune. That is to say, a Strathspey, which is Scottish. Can't take that from us. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Please take your time with Clark Hill. Do not try and play it too quickly, too fast. And I'm Neil Clark of Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com. And on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glenbervie Folk Duo. Thanks very much for your attention and happy piping. <laughs>